Welcome to Assistant on Air, where we have conversations about building for Google Assistant. I'm Jessica, and I'm here with Tony, and we'll be your host today. We are developer relations engineers for Google Assistant. And today, we're going to be answering some of the frequently asked questions we've gotten from the Conversational Action Sunset. Thanks, Tony, for being here with me. Yeah, glad to be here, and I'm glad we can uh, clear up some of the confusion and just make sure everybody's on the same page. Right, and so a lot of these questions we got from out in the, the community, people have tweeted at us, or they've sent us messages, yeah. or they sent a message to someone else who sent it to us. Exactly. Um, so we've got <laughs> a lot of questions that we want just to spend some time and answer them. Yeah. Great. So we're going to just be doing a, a last questions you'll answer, and we'll just tackle right through them. Sounds like a plan. Great. So the first question we have is, can I create new conversational actions? And can I update, download, delete, and or deploy my existing conversational actions? Yeah, so that is not changing until uh, June 2023, which was the sunset announcement date. Uh, so until that time, developers can still create new actions, which is great, especially if anybody had any workshops planned or mm -hmm. lessons planned around that. So that is not going away uh, until next June. Um, and then you can also still download, access, uh, delete your actions, anything like that until that date. Fantastic. Can I still build conversational actions with dialogue flow? Yeah, so there are no changes coming for dialogue flow. That's a separate team. They've got their mm -hmm. own development paths, so no changes coming on that. So you can still continue building, editing, uh, deploying conversational actions with dialogue flow until the sunset date. Great, fantastic. Next question that we have is Do I have to delete my action or do any cleanup once the deprecation or the sunset happens in June 2023? Once the deprecation happens, Google is handling all of that. So there's nothing for developers to have to worry about. Um, you don't need to delete anything. You don't need to clear anything out of the console or anything like that. We'll be handling that for developers. Fantastic. So next kind of natural question is what happens to the content that I build using conversational actions? So is there any way that I can access this? Yeah, so we have, uh, again, the project is going to be available and accessible through the Actions Console until next June. Uh, and in the interim until then, you can still download your project using the Actions SDK. And if anybody needs any directions on how to do that, we actually have an entire page in our documentation on that process. So next question that I have is, how will users be informed about this sunset? So that was something that was very important to us. We wanted to make sure that it was clear to users that this was uh, a change that Google was making specifically. We wanted to support our developers in that and let that know. So. Uh, we will be informing users as they query your actions. Uh, as we get closer to the sunset, the assistant will respond with a notification that these are going to be sunset. And then once the actual deprecation happens, there will be a separate notification for users when they try and trigger your actions to let them know that it that Google has changed this and mm. it has been sunset. OK, fantastic. So as a developer, I don't have to worry about sending out messages and letting people know kind of what to do. Google will be handling that. Yeah, the one thing that you would want to keep in mind as a developer is if you decide to change into another uh, development path or mm. try and deploy a new form of your conversational action, if there are changes to the invocations on that, that's what you would need to um, inform your users of. OK, so if I make any changes, I should let the folks know. But overall, yeah, cool. great. Yeah. So a question that I've actually seen um, quite often is when it comes to interactive Canvas and games, because right now um, that is one of the most popular kind of experiences yeah. with interactive Canvas is using games. That's under the conversational action umbrella. So does that mean that conversational actions are also being sunsetted? Uh, yeah, so uh, interactive Canvas uh, actions will be sunset because those are unfortunately part of this. Uh, and for those uh, user journeys, we would recommend actually developers move towards app actions because yeah. then they can leverage the entire Android ecosystem and the screen environments in there to build out that same game experience. Yeah, that makes sense, because especially because Android has such a rich ecosystem within games. Like, that's a, its own thing kind of genre exactly. um, as well. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Great. Um, another question I've, I've seen quite often is, what's the differences between conversational actions and app actions? Because people are moving from 
from that to our app actions. And I would love, Tony, for you to, to play along with me. Okay. So I'm going to have you be conversational actions. Okay. And I will be app actions. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right? And so let's go kind of um, some of the key things that people should be mindful of, and we'll just go one by one. Sounds good. So for app actions, what happens with app actions or the way users interact with it is that a user says a query, and then that query will be matched to a built-in intent parameters will be passed and the Android application will open to that section in the Android application along with any of the parameters. Yeah, so instead of the uh, single shot or one shot action with app actions, uh, conversational actions are much more of a back and forth. So the user would engage, make a query to the assistant, the assistant would ask more follow-up questions to get all of those parameters and build out um, the response to the user. And then when it comes to building app actions, you'll be using Android. And with conversational actions, that has all been developed on Dialogflow or the Actions Builder or the Actions SDK. So a little bit of a change there. Mm -hmm. Um, And then that also includes other conversational management tools that folks maybe have been using. Right. And then when it comes to language support, App Actions currently supports mainly English. That's the primary language that we've started with. There is a subset of BIIs that support Spanish, Portuguese, and Indonesian as well. And with conversational actions, there was actually support for 20 different languages. So that is something that is a big difference. So it might be a little bit of a, a change for developers if they have their action support in a lot of different locales, but we are working on updating them. Yeah, I remember when I first started off with conversational actions, we didn't have all of these languages. And so I'm, what I'm envisioning is most likely we're going to start rolling out the languages as, as we're going along. Yes. I know something else that when it was early on, gosh, when I joined four years ago, we were kind of throwing out lots of languages and they weren't always the best. <laughs> and so I know we did make an active, um, we were proactive of like, no, let's take, let's have these languages roll out more slowly, but we want them to be good because the last thing you want is to have an experience that's not great because then users don't try it again. So I know that's something that we were really mindful of. Yeah, and that's one of the areas that we're really focusing on is that quality of that user engagement. So yeah, definitely. Okay, so this is the last question we're gonna go over and it's a meaty one. Yeah. And this has to do with understanding the user journeys for app actions. And so what is some of the benefits that a user will get and then also a developer would get within app actions? So there's, as you said, uh, definitely a meaty question. Um, Mm -hmm. But app actions fundamentally allows users to launch Android apps uh, to the point or the shortcut into the app to whatever they're trying to accomplish. So. First thing we would have, as you mentioned earlier, the user makes the query, the app would be opened with the supported parameters that were identified with the uh, built-in intent. Mm-hmm. And uh, and this would kind of map to the equivalent of build, pre-build types or entities in the conversational action world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then for the use case of uh, the example of like somebody trying to order a pizza, you know, hey, G, order a pizza on my example app. Uh, the app would open to a started order where the user can then customize their pizza order. Right. I like to think of that as it, it makes it you don't have to go um, deep into the Android app to get to what you want. So it kind of shortcuts you, it fast forwards you into that spot so you can start getting things done. Exactly. And then we also have dynamic shortcuts, which um, allows the users to jump into that shortcutted customized spot. So uh, if you had a note-taking app, for example, uh, you as the developer could push the name of the notes to the users. So if I had different lists of my to-do list for at home, my to-do list for work, um, you know, my chores list, whatever I wanted to call all those different notes, uh, then you could actually use those given names um, as the developer and push those directly to me as right. the user. Oh so. my gosh, how, how great would that be from a developer point of view too, where you don't have to think about all the user journeys mm-hmm. and try to figure out all the use cases and really be able to just push these things dynamically. Exactly. And then of course, from the user's point of view, you get to have that completely customized experience. Right. And then we also have uh, another big feature that's a really good benefit is Mm. the in-app promo SDK. So Mm -hmm. that allows developers to provide users an option once they've gone through that user journey one time. Uh, So again, if we go back to the ordering a pizza, you know, and you have your custom pizza order, some folks like more cheese, some folks like, you know, 
pepperoni or, you know, any of those strange, uh, not strange toppings, but toppings that they would put on there. They have their, their, their preferences. Preference. Yeah, right? exactly. Uh, so once you go through that experience once, then you could actually, um, your app can actually suggest to the user that they could have a shortcut for, hey, order my usual pizza. And that would actually be an option that they can do. So. Yeah, so it creates like a, a custom assistant shortcut. Yes. And that way the user can just say, hey, G, order my regular pizza versus having to go, you know, start pizza order mm -hmm. and then have to have the whole, whole journey. Exactly. Oh, that's great. And then we actually, there's another, a uh, couple other features that the assistant offers to developers as well, um, where they don't actually have to do any development work. These are just features that are automatically offered to users. So it helps streamline Great. that as well. Mm -hmm. And the first of those is we have app install suggestions. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is for the use case of if a user um, wants to do, wants to accomplish something, they ask the assistant. The assistant is smart enough to know what uh, capabilities your apps support. And mm -hmm. so even if the user doesn't have your app installed on their phone, the assistant will actually pull up your app's Google Play Store page and encourage the user to install it on their device. So that way they can then uh, complete their user journey. Right. Oh my gosh. I could see this being really beneficial, for, especially for folks who are not as tech savvy. Like I, I know I have friends and family that just going to the Play Store, finding the application, and then I'll like download it. Yeah. it it's, it's tedious. So it, that's really nice that you can be able to shortcut that and just, hey, see this query, and it will, if you don't have the application, you can download it right there. Exactly. Just click at a button. Yeah. And then related to that, we also have brandless queries, which mm -hmm. uh, for users who, you know, you get into the flow of things, you don't necessarily identify specific apps that you're trying to complete an action, or you just, uh, like I said, you're not, you're not necessarily thinking about how do I exactly say this query. Um, so you could just say, hey, order my usual pizza. You don't even have to identify the app. And again, the assistant is smart enough to know what uh, capabilities your app supports. So then it can automatically direct the user to your app to complete that journey. So right. as long as it's already installed on their device. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I actually use that a lot when I do my walks. I just say, hey, G, start my walk. And I don't have to say, open up that particular application or reference it. Because exactly. I only have that one application and it has that um, built in intent supported. So it shortcuts that user journey. Right, for you. exactly. It makes it really nice and easy. Exactly. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Tony, for hanging out with us and for answering all of these questions that developers had. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and glad we could answer some of these. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. we, you know, we're still taking more questions. So if yeah. you have more or if you thought of anything new, like please continue to send them our way and we'll be glad to answer them. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. We hope that you enjoyed today's episode. And if you have any suggestions for future episodes, please let us know by leaving a comment below. And of course, follow us on Twitter for updates and new episodes. And don't forget to sign up for our newsletter. I've been Jessica. Chat with you next time. Yeah.